Welcome back. I've come to show you a video today doing some merge collectors for an exhaust manifold that I'm making. You can see some of the bits we've got here, some cut up, one already tacked together to test. And we've got a little jig here. So I'm just gonna go through these bits with you. And I'm gonna do a separate video about the cutting side of it. So this is a merge collector. This takes, in my case, the four cylinders of the car, of the exhaust manifold, and collects it into one point, which on this application is for a T3 flange for a turbocharger. And this here is a jig used for cutting the individual pieces. Now this is from a company called LPS Fab. It's a lovely little jig. This company's in the States. I see them on a Facebook page, but they're on Instagram as well. So check them out. They do loads of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, I saw this little jig for cutting these and I've not done one before. So I thought if it makes my life easier, I want to get involved and have some of that. So I ordered one and here it is. So what we're looking to do is take a piece of, in this case, Schedule 10 stainless steel and you want to get your cuts on it for your collector to turn it into this. So on this case, because it's four into one, you're going to take your 360 degrees, divide it by four, and you've got 90 degrees. So you'll make a cut. Now these here, if you can see, these two screws, countersunk screws, can set your angle, this angle here of the jig. Now we are on 15 degrees we're on. That's what we've chosen to go with. That's what someone else had recommended. So that's the only one I've tried it on so far. But it goes obviously from zero, which you're gonna have, or 2.5, all the way up to 35 degrees. Then what you also have on here, which is pretty cool, is you have this screw down plate that goes on the top. And you'll see this one says, for one and a quarter inch pipe, and it's got a degree ring. Now these are, what are those? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Five degree increments these are on here. And this comes with three of these. I think it comes with a one and a quarter inch, one and a half inch, and a two inch, I do believe. This is the one and a quarter, which is what I'm using. So what you'll do, I'm doing four into one, one and a quarter inch pipe. So I'll sit my pipe anywhere in here, but I'll just show you as I've already got one cut. This will sit in the bandsaw this way. The bandsaw will come down and make its first cut, which is that one there. And then I need to rotate it 90 degrees, going by this degree ring here. Sometimes it's a little bit off 90, but what I tend to do when I'm making a second cut is I take a, a square and I square this up with the blade on the bandsaw. Now I just use a small portable bandsaw. This is a Femi NG120. Um, it fits in there. This is good enough for what I want. If you've got big, more industrial bandsaws, that's even better because you get more rigidity on the blade, but this is pretty good. As far as portable bandsaws go and benchtop bandsaws, these are about as good as you can find. So we've got the bandsaw set up here and we're gonna cut some more lengths of the Schedule 10 304 stainless. I'm gonna cut enough to do two collectors just so if I do anything wrong, I've already got them cut. So we've got three pieces cut here, so we need to cut another five. We've got our stop set up and we're cutting these to roughly 75 to 80 millimeters long. So let's go ahead and cut the other five pieces. Right, so there's all eight pieces cut. And now what we're gonna do is I'll just move this back in. I 
I'll move that there for a minute. And what I'll go around and do is I'll take the air file and I'll just deburr the inside and outside of all these pieces and the sharp bits that you can see there. Once I've got them deburred, I'll get all of them done, and then we're going to put them in the lathe and just true off one end so that when you've got it in the little jig here that sits in the saw, that you know that it's nice and flat on the bottom face there. You probably don't have to do that, but I prefer to do that, just being fussy. So yeah, I'll get all the rest of these deburred with the file, and then I'll get them in the lathe. Right, I was going to deburr these on the lathe, but I remembered I got some new decent belts for this little hobby belt sander here. So, it cleans it up pretty good. So, we'll take these and we'll do each one, both sides, just flatten it off and then just deburr on the edges there. But I did do the inside with the file, air file as you've seen. So, let's quickly do the last four of these. And that's all eight pieces done there. So we're going to put you here and I'll show you the process of making the cuts in the bandsaw using the LPS Fab jig. Let's just clean this bench down a bit. Right, so there's the jig that I showed you before. We did the green ring, and this has got the one and a quarter inch pipe plate on there. That adjusts it in and out, and then here's your angles on the side. So we're at 15 degrees and on the one and a quarter. Let's take this off of the saw here, because we don't need that anymore. To be fair, I wouldn't mind, but my bench isn't really big enough and it gets in the way space is of a premium in my little shed here but that's going to be changing very soon and I'll definitely be doing a video on that when the time is right so let's take this off and put this to one side in the band saw and just bring you in a little bit right so what we want to do is cut our pipes on the angle on each side and then rotate it and make the second cut so we end up with this this is the one that I welded in the other video but I've also now had a little practice of fusing the insides and there's the center on this one got a little bit dark and gray a little bit heated I should have left it in between so there's nothing wrong with that it's just not as nice as I want the finished one to be and this was the one that was too small here for the t3 flange so this was just practice now I've worked out 
my measurements already to get a good size to suit the TP flange. So your jig sits in the jaws like so and your pipe's going to sit in and be tightened up in the clamp. Now what I tend to do to save me mark in the pipe is where you've got the seam on the inside of this you've normally got one or two matching lines on the outside so I'll pick one of them lines and I'll line it up with one of the 45 degree lines on the collector here or shall I say on the collector jig let me take that out and I can show you a little bit better so I'll pick I'll pick that line there and then I'll tighten that down so as you can see this line here on the tube which I will remember because there is a couple of others but I remember it's this one that lines up with the 45 degree mark on the jig get that in there got this old Allen key T-bar that I made up just to tighten that down and now on my specific saw different on everyone else's because you'll have to work out where you're going to measure it from I measure my cut distance from the underside here to where the edge of the collector sits so I know that doing my one I want it to be say there on the first cuts I'll do two of them then the second cuts I want to move it there for example and that will give me my two different angles to make more of a rectangle rather than a square when I'm doing the cuts so let me just get in here and set it for this first one tighten this up now because this isn't going to be a square how this one came out it needs to be more rectangle like that one to suit the flange you need these to be paired so you'll have one pair two pairs because if you cut them all this one first then moved it and done the next one they'd be one-sided if that makes sense you'll see what I mean when I get cutting so on this one I'll cut it here first at the setting it's at then I'll put another one in and cut there then I'll move this and I'll make the second cut which is the deeper cut and then when I do the next two I'll do the deeper cut first on two of them then I'll do the shorter cut second and then that way they'll end up how they want to be because they need to obviously be sided so one pair is for the left side one pair is for the right side if not they wouldn't go together I hope that makes sense so let's put them down there out of the way double check our measurement and we're good so let's go ahead just adjust our guide here from when we were cutting because you want it as rigid as you can get it so I'll just give yourself just enough clearance that should be good and let's go
There's that side piece cut off. Get rid of that. And we'll get another one in there. Just clean. Cut out of there. And we do the same as before. We want to make sure we've got it on a line so we find our most visible and I'll just mark these this time so there you can see one of the lines which I'll use to line up with the degree ring again I have to come in from this side a bit hard with the camera here I'll just work over the top tighten that down And again, we'll do our cut. So we're doing these one at a time, and then we'll go around and do our second cut on this pair. So that's the first cut on both of those ones. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to release the main vise. Here and put this To my other measurement that I worked out reclamp that there so as you can see we've moved it further away from the blade So when I rotate, you're going to see 
a different depth of cut. So now what I do is I put that there, I loosen off the clamp on the jig, and I want to rotate this roughly 90 degrees. Now the degree ring, depending on how your vice is, it might not clamp perfect. So what I tend to do is I put this level across the flat sides that we've just cut, and then I'll just rotate until I reckon I'm good. And I'll nip down on that. Just check it again. It's never gonna be 100% perfect because you're gonna get a little bit of walk and deflection off of your blade. So what I'm gonna do is I need to get that out of there. Just clear that out. Make sure you've got your goggles on when you're blowing these out because if you get them fine filings in your eye, that's going to cause you some proper grief. So yeah, just check that. See, I'm a little bit out there. If I try and show you from this side, it will give you a better view. So there you can see I'm just running the straight edge up against the blade sitting on there so I'm happy with that. So I'll clamp that down, check it hasn't moved on me. We're good with that one, as good as it's going to get. And now we'll so now we know we're straight, we're happy with that, we're rotated, we've moved this to our new position and we'll take our second cut. There's the off cut for that piece. So that one's now done. So we keep the jig exactly where it is. Just loosen it off to take the piece of pipe out. And there you see the two cuts. So now we have to do the same again on this one to do that little cut. So we do that one now. The same as before, we had cut it there, and we're going to rotate this now to round about there, but we'll check it with our little level. 
little level, little set square, sorry. Try and get that as perfect as we can there. Let's try and tighten it there. Just double check. Yep, happy with that. Tighten the jig back up again. And we'll go ahead and make a second cut on this piece. The other piece so we can now take these out so these two pieces are done if you see what I mean there because they're both the same it works out that they're sided so these will be two halves on one and now we've got a cut the next two we'll do this small cut first then rotate and do the big cut so let's get another piece loaded up in there. And that's that one done. So let's release it out of the jig. Let's clear that out. Ready for the next one. And then what you get on these band saws some of the bigger ones might be a bit better if you've got a bigger blade with more rigidity but you get the little burr at one end but there now you'll see what we mean about them being sided but because of these two burrs you'll see that they don't sit perfectly together yet but once them burrs are removed they will do. So we'll take them all off afterwards, but that is one half of the collector there. And there we are done. So let's just move this to one side for a second. Then I'll bring this here. So there's our halves, and then this will be our other half. So once we deeper the edges, that's what you're going to see. 
So let me go back over to the belt sander and I'll just take this small burr off here which will allow us to sit the pieces flat together. So I'll be back when I've done that. So here's the four pieces of our collector. I wanted to polish these up before we cut them and I completely forgot. So I've just had to go over them with a fine DA just rather than them having the rough finish with any etched writing still on it like you see in that one I want to get rid of that so it's nice and clean because this is going to be one that I'm actually using on a job for a manifold so yep yeah, they're all cleaned up and we've cleaned them with a bit of um, like pre-weld solvent just to get any dirt and contaminants off as best we can I haven't got any small um, like mops that I can just go over and shine up the inside with so that should do anyway that should do a good job so what we're going to do now is we're going to take two halves at a time we'll lay them down we'll line them up and we'll get each pair tacked so that they're nice and in line like that and then we can put the two halves together and we can check the fit onto the flange so I'm just going to move the camera back a bit out of the way for this because I did this the other day forgot to move the camera and nearly cooked the GoPro which is what I definitely don't want to do so let's turn the welder on over to the smaller Pyrex cut because what I found was when I did this practice one the bigger cut if I just grab that these bigger cups here do a wonderful job of coverage on the outside and just as it trails off it gives you a nice finish and a really nice color but once I got to the center you can see that's a little bit greyer than I'd want it. Some people might say that's fine. And there's nothing physically, structurally wrong with it. That's all good. And we fuse the inside. But this cup, even though I could have huge stick out, it doesn't allow me to get down in there. So by changing to this slightly smaller one, I can get pretty much right in there with about 15 mil of stick out. Whereas on this one, I needed about two inches to get down in there and still have a little bit of movement. So hence why I've swapped over to this one. So we'll just tack these up now. Get a bit of filler on for this one, I think. And I'll do it 
do another one just back here. I'm not going to use my gloves for the minute while I'm tacking this up. so we've got a nice tack on the inside there and one there and that one on the end but when we grind that angle and cut that a bit flatter we probably we might lose that tack so there's one pair and do these other two So same as before, three nice tacks, and there's our two halves, and now we can look at getting these two halves put together to make a nice collector. Here's where you can see how far out, if at all, you are. And I can see that one of these has still got more of a gap than I'd really want. in that one. So I'm just going to grind that one down a bit and that one just to get rid of that. I'll just put them on the belt sander, give them a, a little grind down, trying to get them perfect as we can before we start. Closes up their edges a little bit, gives you 
a nice tight fit up all the way around. Just got to find a compromise to get it the best position you can. If it's slightly out of line, you're going to fuse the inside together, and you're also going to um, obviously weld along the outside. So if you have got tiny little gaps there, you're not going to see them when you're done. So don't worry about it too much. Just get it to where it's a happy medium and you're happy with it and then go from there We've got two small tacks on there. You can see tiny gaps there and a tiny bit there, but we can work with that. So let's have a little look at how it's going to go on the flange. Let me take you off here quick and I'll show you how the flange is. So there we are on the flange. So what we can do is we'll weld the sides and then we'll just out the middle but obviously the exhaust gases are coming from the pipe side into this T3 flange so if it's in a little bit that's not too much of an issue and we can dress that round. What you don't want is it wider than the flange and then in theory the gas flow is hitting a solid edge. So this side, undersized slightly, isn't too bad but I could probably open that up one or two mil on either side. I've probably got a better cut, to be fair, on the width on that one. That's a little bit over. So one we've got a couple of mil over, one we've got a couple of mil under. So it's just about perfecting your measurements to get it right so I know the measurement I did on that one and I know the measurement I did on this one so next one I'll go in between and that should be where I'm at but they're all usable it's not as if any of them are failures and gonna have to be binned that's the main thing so now we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna use the inside here well actually I'll put a tack on the outside then what I'll do is I'll take this across to the belt sander and we'll try and lose this shape here and get ourselves a nice flat across the top there so we'll belt sand that and I'll show you when we're finished <laughs> 